Hi, everyone, and welcome to the second video podcast of Cornerstone Conversations. Um, once again, we have Tazim Elkington, and today we'll be talking about our topic of conversation is self sabotage. Hi, Tazim. Hi, Damaris. How are you? Nice to see you again. Same. Great to see you. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny to say nice to see you again because we can't do it face to face, can we? Yeah, yeah. This is the new normal, I guess. So Yes. Yeah. Okay, so shall we get right to it? Um, we'll Absolutely. Start, yeah, self-sabotage. Um, what is self-sabotage? So self-sabotage is when a person it does all sorts of things uh, with their with their life, with their relationship, and I'll just name a few because I actually wrote them down: blaming others, procrastination, trouble managing their own skills, self doubt, passive aggressive, dating people who aren't right for them, uh, not able to state one's needs clearly, putting oneself down, not being able to show vulnerability. These are all part of self-sabotage staying in a job that they're very unhappy in or um, where a boss is being really nasty or even you know uh being harassed in in deep ways and they're still there in those situations now procrastination for example that's a huge one as well people don't realize that Self-sabotage comes with many faces. Mm -hmm. And these faces vary in behavior. Yeah. And I've just named a few. Yeah. Okay, so um, how, why do we then term this as self-sabotage? Is it because you're, is it really literally what it is? You're sabotaging yourself. Your sabotage. So let's take let's take an example. Blaming others. Yeah. Okay. Let's take the first one. Blaming others. Why is it considered self sabotage? It's considered self sabotage because you're not taking responsibility. Right. You have to be able to look at the flip side. Okay. Say procrastination. Why is it self sabotage? Procrastination. Procrastination is self sabotage because you're not making decisions you are stay, sitting on the fence so in order to understand why it's self-sabotage you have to look at the flip side let's take the next one trouble managing skills so people have a lot of issues managing their time organizing planning saying no all of that if you have issues with those basic skills that you need if you're in business or if you're running your own business and you're not utilizing them, of course you're self-sabotaging. Because if you don't manage your time and you're working 14, 16 hours a day, it's not going to serve you. If you're not organized and you're not planning, you're not going to see any benefits in your business. Right. Let's take the next one, self-doubt. Yeah. Self-doubt. Oh, you know, this is, this is a common one with most people. Mm. When you doubt yourself, what does that mean? That means if you don't really feel that you're capable and able, it's going to be a little difficult to get you to convince other people to think that you're capable and, and able. Hmm. Okay. So once people start to look at the flip side, they yeah. can see that they, that's self-sabotage. Yeah. Okay, so what are some of the things that we can do um, as just on an individual level to, um, to help ourselves not self-sabotage, to avoid self-sabotaging? So before we actually go into what can we do, maybe the better question first so that people understand this and then we come back to your question because it's a great question mm -hmm. is why do we do this? Yeah, why do we do it? Why do we self-sabotage? And we self-sabotage because we have learned patterns of behavior since we're children with the programs that state, I am not worthy. 
I am a bad child. I am not loved. I am not confident. I didn't get the right grades. I, my parents were upset with me. I mean, all of these come from our environment, right? Mm. So we don't realize how hardwired those programs and patterns are in our head that were created when maybe, you know, you didn't get the right grades or you said something and, you know, you were put down or because your parents had their patterns and their programs that they offloaded and imposed on you because this is how we live, right? Mm. But at some stage, we have to actually understand that this is, this is a program that's not helping my life. Once people get into their 20s and 30s, they actually have to stop blaming their parents for all their useless programs, you know? They really have to stop blaming the parents. Because after you're 18, you're supposed to be a responsible adult. Okay, let's give you a couple more years, 21. Okay, let's give you a couple more years, 25, while you've started to grow up and become an adult. But after 25, 30, if you're still talking about your parents and you're still blaming them for things they didn't know better and for things that they can't change and there's nothing they can do about it, and you're not taking responsibility for your life, there is a huge self-sabotage itself. Okay, can I just jump in here? Because, so you've just said like, at, after a certain age, you need to stop blaming your parents. But for many people, they are still very much tied to their parents, uh, what their parents think of them, what their parents expect of them. So on the one hand, you can decide that you're going to take your life in your own hands and, you know, carve your own uh, path. But on the other hand, you will still be getting pushback from the very people who raised you because that's not how they raised you to be, so to speak. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, I um, totally hear you. Yeah. So it becomes then very difficult to just sort of break away from that and say, especially if you've uh, grown up with um, belief systems that no longer serve you, and then you decide, okay, I'm going to break away and you know, chart my own path. But then on the other hand, you have all these things pulling you back, including your parents telling you, but this is not the way it's supposed to be. And you know, so it's- So, so you know, it's fantastic, fantastic question, Damaris, thank you. So think about it this way. If you're still behaving like you were 12 years old when you're 28, where's the problem? Because if you're telling me you're going to get pushback from your parents at 28, that means you're not behaving your age. That means you're still, your life is still being run by your parents. Now, how does that make sense at 28 or 30 or 35? How does that make sense? I, I, and I here is where we, we really have to take responsibility and be able to discuss, be able to discuss with our parents and say, you know, by the way, how, be able to openly say how things happened back then, they happened, they did the way they did. However, now I really am choosing and wanting to be different and I need you guys to understand this. This is what an adult conversation is. Right. This is what tough conversations are about. People don't want to have those hard conversations. Mm. And they don't want to face the parents. Even if your parents, it's not about blame. It's about saying, you know, whatever happened then happened. Now I've got to change something about myself. So what are the expectations of your parents when you're 30 years old? If you're still living by your parents' expectations and you're unhappy, how is that helping anybody? Yeah, good does question. Does answer your question? It does answer my question. I guess it's just about being brave enough to stand up for yourself and what you want and what you believe, right? Yes, and also understanding, like we said in the last discussion, we cannot keep behaving the same way and expect life to change. We cannot keep repeating the patterns of our great 
grandparents, grandparents, parents, and expect our lives to be any different. If we want change for the future generations, for our, for, you know, your children, your, my grandchildren, if we want changes to occur, we can't keep repeating the same patterns and expect things to change. Right. So if we keep putting ourselves in these little boxes and saying, this is what was expected of me. This is how I have to behave. This is what I must do. Says who? You're an adult. If you're not taking responsibility and you're not redefining your life because things are not working, and if you get pushed back, you ought to be able to explain to these people, because we're always respectful with parents, that, you know, you, it's important for you to do it differently. Yeah. Okay. So we have to get over those old traditional culture, cultural ways. And that's not about disrespect. It's about really moving forward and breaking really old ingrained patterns and programs. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess it's, it's always easier said than done, right? Yeah, it's not easy to do it. However, if people don't start, um, we'll keep transferring this to the kids and the grandkids to come. Yeah. Okay, so then that then goes uh, now to the, the other question I asked you. Maybe you can just yes. go into that. Um, okay, so how, how do we change some of this stuff? Yeah. So, you know, children when they're small feel helpless because they're little and the parents are up here. So even first of all, the height creates, uh, creates a, a, a smallness for a child because they're little, yeah? And then they put the parents on the pedestals. So this is why even as we grow and we can even be taller than our parents, but we still put them up here. And I'm not saying to take your parents off a pedestal. I want you to understand that they don't need to be on a pedestal. They need to be, people need to understand that parents are human. And this is really important. So firstly, your parents are human, capable of making a lot of mistakes because they have made them and parents will carry on making mistakes. So for us, it's really important, first of all, to take away that really old equation of putting parents on a pedestal. Parents are human. And that's why we ought to understand that firstly. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, this thing about fear of failure, I, I'm, I'm skeptical about um, the number of books that have been written on it. That has con in these books have convinced people that part of the reason why they're not successful is because they're afraid of success. And this can be a bit misleading for me, okay? Uh, because it gives you an excuse not to take responsibility. Of course, the whole point here is what is success? And people define success in their own way. So mostly people des describe success with money and how much they own and what the bank balance is and what they're wearing and where they're living and what they're driving. For me, this is not success. Success for me is being successful as a human being because, oh my goodness, is it tough to be human? <laughs> And to be human means accepting all the shades of your parts, the light, the dark, the grays, and accepting all those parts and examining them and looking at the parts that don't serve you, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's really important to identify, okay, so I've done, let's talk about a relationship. I have had one girlfriend, a second girlfriend, a third girlfriend, and a fourth girlfriend, and a ninth girlfriend, and the same pattern has repeated, okay? If the same pattern has repeated, where's the issue? The issue is with me, most likely. Yeah. So what is the issue? Am I afraid to commit? 
am I bringing the wrong people into my life because um, I'm afraid or I'm, I don't want to commit or um, I actually don't want to be serious. It could be any one of those things. Okay. So if you don't look at yourself and you don't pick up where the patterns are, because there's a, it's a cycle, it'll keep repeating. So identify what your, what your um, gaps are. Then um, figure out what triggers this. So, you know, if it's procrastination, what do you procrastinate about? Or if it's um, blaming others, why don't you take responsibility? And what do you do to create this situation where you blame others? So you pick all of this and see where the triggers are. Why do you blame someone else when someone else, is it when someone else tells you, but you know what, what you just said was really, really upsetting and you're not able to handle that. So then you turn around and tell them, oh, okay, piss off them. I don't want to have anything to do with you rather than deal with it and say, what do you mean it was upsetting? I didn't say it to upset you. I said it because X, Y, and Z and be able to have that conversation. But you see, people don't communicate. Now we've been forced to communicate being in the house for six months after COVID. Mm. And even then people are not communicating. Even then people are not communicating. People don't even know how to look into each other's eyes. <laughs> if you ask people, when was the last time you looked into someone's eyes, they'll tell you they can't remember because they've been too busy looking at, I don't know the five different screens they're attached to now since COVID started. Hmm. The TV, the iPhone, the cell phone, the laptop, the computer, uh, and who knows what else, right? Mm. So people really have to go inwards and they have to identify these things and then they have to start really talking about it helps, but go, go and get help if you can afford it, go and get professional help because self-sabotage is a big one. It doesn't just appear in one place. It appears all around your life. Oh, okay. So what are you saying that um, you can, if you're self-sabotaging, it means it affects every area of your life. It wouldn't be just that I'm self-sabotaging in one area, but I've worked on another. So it's like, uh, it really it's like a bouquet. Like, sorry? It's like a bouquet of flowers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most likely you will not be sabotaging only on one part. You will be sabotaging on several, if not many parts of mm. your life. Mm. So people shouldn't take this lightly. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a really deeply ingrained um, symptom of how we were brought up. I mean, you know, ask Kenya and kids, me, I know. I don't know whether you are. But me, I used to get chapwad and shouted at full time. Mm. And I know most Kenyans have been chapwad and shouted at full time. Okay? Because this is part of our, our psyche. All right? I mean, even though we've got a law that says that children are not allowed to be beaten in schools, go to some of the schools. Now we can't, but go to some of the schools and see the way these children are being treated. How are you going to feel worthy when we're brought up like this? Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. and violence is such a is another ingrained part of our culture. Violence is acceptable. It's acceptable, and it's but we'll leave that one for another. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's also the easy way out. You know, just what you were saying earlier, like people don't communicate. It's so much harder to communicate my needs than it is to kind of just find the you know, the reflex is do as I say, you know, as opposed to mm -hmm. let's have this conversation and, you know, try to understand each other. I think, I think that's how we were generally raised to just, you know, do as I say, follow the rules, don't question, keep your mouth shut, you know, that kind of thing. 
And that's it. So we really, and especially as Africans, we need to realize that denying these things is, is really not helping anybody. We are such big deniers of the reality. That's why you see therapy is a problem mm. for us in, in Kenya or in, on this continent. It's yeah. shameful to go for therapy. It's taboo. It's you, if you have a, a mental disconnect or imbalance, there's a real problem. Even if you don't have a mental imbalance and you're feeling your life is not the way it ought to be, it's taboo to go and get help. But this is, this is something we have to get over because we have so many issues. We have so many underlying issues that have been passed on for decade after decade after decade. And we don't know how many centuries. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, so I, I also had a couple of, let me just see my questions. Um, so how does one know that then they're self-sabotaging. Um, what are some of the signs? You might have mentioned this a bit earlier, but if you can just clarify that for us. One of the signs is always feeling like people don't understand. People don't understand me. People don't understand what I'm saying. People don't understand. People don't get it in the sense that, you know, um, It, there's just, there's no harmony. There's dysfunctionality. So whether it's in work or it's in um, your relationship or it's in uh, how you see yourself in the mirror, even how you see yourself in the mirror, there's always, you're always looking for kinks, okay? And people can figure out because things will not be working. Not that anything at this stage in time is flowing because at the moment we have, we've been shocked out of our systems and we're in a, a precarious situation. But we know that, we know, I mean, let me tell you something. Every person knows what their issues are. They just have to stop being in denial. Mm. They can feel it, they can sense it, they can see it. They have mirrors, all the people around them are mirrors for them. Yeah. And they can sense it. But they just don't want to face it. And that's it. And so that's a big one. Not taking responsibility for one's life is a big self-sabotage. Mm. And that comes with, with, the, with learning to clear your baggage. Yeah. So it starts with clearing your baggage and then you, in fact, I like the way we've kind of organized this. So clear your baggage and now some of these things that you need to specifically work on. Yeah. Yeah. And people need to start looking at themselves and stop being in denial and being able to stand up for themselves. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to stand up for, for ourselves as adults. If you behave like a 12 year old and you're 35 years old, whose problem is that? I guess, I guess Tazim, one of the topics we'll also have to talk about is, it's probably a bit deeper, but related to this is, uh, personally, I know I self-sabotage in, in quite a number of ways, yeah? But one of the things that I also fear is judgment. You know, you fear judgment from other people. You fear judgment from what your family might think, what your friends might think. So it's really difficult to just, you know, basically say, through this, I'm gonna do me. You know, it's really, really difficult. And I think that's a topic that we might have to discuss like in depth um, at some point. But I do think that um, for those of us who do self-sabotage and we, we um, yeah, we, we look to others to tell us how to be and what's acceptable and what does society think, you know? I'm Very just writing this down. Yeah. So that we can discuss the phantom society and judgments. 
Okay. Phantom society, yeah? Phantom society, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's gonna be a topic in itself. But I think when I when I think about the things that I do to um when I fail to honor myself, it's usually because of this uh what you're now calling phantom society and what it expects. Yes, phantom society. That's outside of friends and uh, family. Mm. It's what I consider the phantom society. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's, yeah, maybe we, uh, let's conclude this one for today. Um, Okay. So maybe the last question I had was um, how do you help someone who you can see is self-sabotaging? What can you do to help them? So like I've said previously, please, people, don't try to be therapists because that's not your job. Yeah, so it's really important. But say you're in a relationship with someone and someone is self-sabotaging. Say, for example, they're not taking responsibility. Hmm. And it depends on your relationship with them because mostly people that are in close relationships will not listen to the other person unless you have a really healthy relationship. Okay. But the easiest thing is to have that hard conversation and say, you know, I really would like to speak to you and like to tell you that, you know, this is what I'm seeing and you might, you probably wouldn't like me saying it, but this is what I'm seeing and you need to look at it because there's something wrong here. And these are the outcomes. This is what I'm seeing as outcomes. So I'm sure it's having some effect on you. So it's having those tough conversations, which most, most people don't like to have. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's basically it. Just have the tough conversation, right? Yeah. yeah. And then they're going to turn around and tell you to take a hike or they're not interested or, or they may actually listen. And, 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 you know, say, you know, if, if you're doing it this way and it's not working, how about you try doing it another way? Mm-hmm. And what are the options? What other ways are there? Have you considered that? Okay. So, yeah, we don't have conversations. We don't have hard conversations and tough conversations. Kenyans have a big avoidance of having those tough conversations. That's why social media works really well because you can post things and you don't really get into a conversation. But to do what we're doing right now, this face-to-face conversation, and I turn around and I say, okay, Dama, um, I don't want to get into your personal stuff, not, not because this is not about our personal stuff. This is about defining what people do, all right? But if I were to get into your personal stuff and say, so Dama, how do you self-sabotage? And you would tell me, and I would be able to tell you straight up because that's the relationship we have. Yeah. Right? But most people don't. Most people will, first of all, not even step near it. They'll tiptoe around it. We have to learn to step into the problem so that we can find solutions yeah yeah and i think yeah we have to it it takes both of them it takes two people to be in that same space right because maybe the reason why you'd be in a relationship and somebody doesn't ask you those tough questions is because they're not willing to answer those very same questions right so then it's just very you know fluffy and nice uh because it's convenient for both of you and it's superficial and and superficial ultimately yes yeah superficial that's why i've chosen to be single i haven't met a guy who's willing and able to have those deep conversations so the last so many years i've been on my own because there is no way i'm going to be with someone who's like living with a a piece of wood near me, (laughs) who I can't communicate with, or a wall, who I can't have these deep conversations with, who I I, I cannot 
who cannot reach me because I've done such a lot of work on myself. There's no point giving myself stress. For what? Mm. Yeah. Relationships, that's another big one. <laughs> and it's not like I haven't had them. I've had them. Yeah. But, you know, making that decision that unless I can really be with someone who gets the depth of understanding and doing the work to become human, to become a successful human being, I don't want to talk about, you know, which car are we buying next or which house are we going to next or what holiday are you taking me on? Those are just, you know, they're irrelevant for me at this stage in my life. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Because it's, it's unimportant. Hmm. So it's, it's good to share some of these self-truths about my life as well, because people understand then that, you know, that even that is a choice. Not being in a relationship is a choice. Hmm. Not because I can't be, but because I don't want to be unless there is a person. And hey, I don't know. With COVID, I doubt our paths will cross for now. Yeah. <laughs> but if they do, then it's on your terms. Well, it's on, yeah, not just for the sake of it. That's another, another thing no. with society, you know, with our, you have to be in a relationship, no matter how it's, I'm in a relationship, you know, I have my partner. And if you don't have a relationship, somehow you failed. That's another definition of fa failure, right? But yeah, I don't buy into it. You and I both know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, our conversations can go on for hours, as we know, mm. because one thing leads to another and then it brings another thread and another thread. So we just need to keep track of this and keep these short and move on to the next topic. Like we've got, you know, judgments and phantom society. We can talk about that next. Yeah. And then we can talk about false positivity and we can talk about oh, this uh, topics are un un unending. I have all the topics listed for the seven, eight years of open corners. I did all those pieces of paper. I got someone to write them out for me. So I've got, I don't know, a thousand or more questions that we, you know, that we can discuss. Uh, hopefully not because that'll take the rest of our lives. Uh, which is fine. Yeah. So, yeah. so content, there is so much to discuss so much. Okay. Okay. So let's end it here with the self-sabotage. I think uh, the biggest, what I've taken away from this is that, um, you know, self-sabotage are behaviors that you, uh, certain behaviors that you keep, you keep doing. They're not uh, beneficial to you but you keep doing them. And the reason why you keep doing them is because of um, the way you were raised, the people that raised you. And going forward, what you need to do is break away from your past and make a decision to take responsibility for your own life. Right? Have yes. I got it right? You've got it completely right. And taking responsibility means changing those kinks. Yes. Okay. All right. And not working at the, at the symptom level, but finding, really figuring out the core issues and what it is that makes you do those things. This is really important because people try to change the symptoms, but inside and underneath, they're still feeling all of that stuff. So we have to deal with the core aspects of our life that make us do things the way they do. Mm -hmm. Sorry, can you just explain that a little bit? What you mean by dealing with the symptoms and not the... So, so the symptom, it, symptoms, self-sabotage are symptoms. Yeah. Are made up of a whole collection of symptoms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These symptoms come from, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I can't make it, I'm a failure, I'm scared, I'm not good in, as good as my brother, my sister, my... 
So those are the aspects that one has to deal with. Right. And then they manifest as now the... the Self-sabotage like in the very many different faces. Okay, got it. That's, that's, yeah, that's really powerful. I've got that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Tazim. It's You're welcome. Nice. I'll see you again soon. See you again, uh, yeah, uh, two weeks from now. Okay. All right. You take care. All right. Okay. Take care. Okay.